One of these engines is not like the others. One of these engines is not the same. Can you guess which one it is? Yeah, if you said this middle one, you are correct. It has a very different operating principle than these two Stirling engines. A lot of people market this as a Stirling engine, but uh, in fact, it goes by many names, uh, flame liquor, flame sucker, uh, vacuum engine. It's, uh, yeah, in that category. But uh, I'm going to try to convince you that this more operates like a pre-James Watt steam engine than it does a Stirling engine. Okay, well, let's take a close-up look at it, look around and see how it operates. Let's do a tour of this engine. We'll start on the simple side. This is obviously the flywheel. And we'll go around here to the back side. It connects to the crankshaft here. And on the crankshaft is a connecting rod out to the piston, going to the cylinder. We'll get a little better view of that in a second. As we keep turning, we'll get to what they call the small wheel. And this actuates the valve. Now, here's something that uh, you may want to know there's a notch right there in the in this piece of metal there's a notch right there and this hole this screw hole is supposed to line up with that notch when the valve up here is two-thirds closed it took me a while to understand the chinese english on the instructions so if your machine isn't working right that uh, could be an issue okay moving on around here we see the what they describe as the small wheel and it operates this push rod and that actuates this lever and this lever moves this rod and on the end of that rod is a very thin piece of metal that is acting as a valve and because this metal is terribly thin we know that as a valve it would not hold up against pressure so the engine must be operating on a vacuum or low pressure to be more technically correct so um, how does this work well as you can see the burner is adjustable like this and you're supposed to put it in front of the hole so you start it up uh, the burner is interesting because it has a instead of a wick it has a rolled up piece of a very fine mesh and anyway if we adjust that what happens is that the port opens and it sucks some flame inside there and of course the the plasma of the flame is very hot it's a hot gas it goes inside the cylinder and then the valve closes and very quickly that plasma comes in contact with the cool metal of the engine it uh, changes volume it shrinks in volume and that causes the atmosphere to push on the back of the piston back here and that pulls the piston forward then it opens it up and it allows the vacuum to escape if you <laughs> yeah that's not the correct way of saying it but allows more air in uh, which sucks in flame and then it just repeats the whole cycle over and over again and of course we'll start this up and take a look at it this is a diagram of our flame liquor engine and I will start this up right here it will you can hear it operating and we can kind of compare it to the uh, diagram the real thing against the diagram and in a second it's going to slow down and get quiet there we go it's running in slow-mo so the steps there's only two phases to this motor it's really a two cycle engine if you will what happens is this valve opens and this piston starts to move backwards and this is not a power stroke it's literally just sucking the flame inside of it and that flame is hot plasma it's highly expanded gas and so piston moves all the way back and the valve begins to close here the valve does close and we have this this hot plasma is now in contact with the cool cylinder walls you see the uh, cooling fins here and what happens when a hot gas cools it shrinks so the atmosphere starts pushing on the back of this piston drives it forward as it uh, finishes shrinking what will happen is the valve opens and allows the cool air to be expelled and then we start up here again and it starts pulling in a fresh charge of highly expanded plasma and then it operates it goes through the cycle again 
I said that I think that this engine is more like the original steam engines, the atmospheric or vacuum type, or they also call them condensing engines. This is prior to James Watt and then using the steam to actually drive it. Uh, so in this diagram, we can see what's going on. The weight over here is lifting the piston up. The steam is not pushing it up. The weight is actually pulling down and lifting this piston up. Then this valve right there opens and allows steam to enter there. Now, again, the steam's not pushing on it. Then the steam valve closes. We'll see that right there. Steam valve closes and there's a spray of water gets injected into there. And what happens when you cool steam? It condenses, it, it contracts, it gets a smaller volume. So the vacuum pulls the cylinder down. In other words, atmospheric pressure pushes on the back side of the cylinder and that's where the power comes from. So you just keep repeating this cycle. So in 1758, there's this guy named Henry Wood. He realized that you could just uh, introduce the hot gases rather than going through the steam part. You could just uh, eat the flame and get the same thing done. So here it is. I have cut out the walking beam and all that. And if we lay them side by side, you can see they're pretty much doing the same thing, except that here the flame, if you will, is passing through the uh, steam phase. So it's turning water into steam. It's injecting it into here, into the cylinder, and then it is cooled by water. On this side, instead of the water being turned into steam and being uh, sucked into the cylinder, we're just taking the heat directly. We're taking this fire and eliminating the water steam and just going directly into the cylinder. And instead of water cooling our steam and causing the volume to shrink, we are using just this cooling fin to do the same job. So it pulls in the hot plasma, which is, has a high volume, touches the cylinders, cools it off. Could you inject cool water in here? Yeah, I guess you probably could. So, um, is this a Stirling engine? Well, I looked up on Wikipedia and I also looked up several academic sources and they all say that it's a closed cycle with a permanent gas in it. And clearly I cannot imagine a way that you could make a, you know, leave the gas, recycle the gas inside here and cause this to work. So I think by definition, this is probably not a, uh, a Stirling engine. It's, it's certainly not a steam engine because it lacks the steam. But uh, I think it's, uh, yeah, a vacuum engine or whatever. It's more like one of those uh, general categories than it is a, quote, Sterling engine.